Welcome to Morocco. Wow, <laughs> it is so hot. Oh my god, this smells so good. Basaha. Who would have thought that I would have needed my swimming trunks here in Casablanca? We Good morning guys from Casablanca, Morocco. This is the largest city in the country and the economic center. As well as that, it is our first time on the continent of Africa. We flew in yesterday. We have a huge purple van all to ourselves for our four hour drive from Marrakesh to Casablanca. This is our transport that's going to be taking us around Morocco for the next 17 days with G Adventures. I'm so excited. And we actually have a day spare to explore Casablanca before starting a 17 day road trip around this incredible country with G Adventures. I'm so excited, I'm hungry, I need some Moroccan food. Casablanca is actually overlooked by tourists for places like fairs and Marrakesh. We're gonna explore, we're gonna show you why you should visit Casablanca. Um, and actually we have just spotted some street food. We spotted a little it last guy. Night. It we spotted so it last good. night, it's right near where we're staying, and it's actually Mesenem, which is Moroccan pancakes. Oh my god, this smells so good. Hello, can we have uh, two of these? Three? Two. Yeah. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you. These look and smell amazing they were one dirham 50 each so i haven't quite worked out the exchange rate like yet <laughs> like 10 p um and it's covered in sugar so maseno you can have it with cheese you can have it with honey and you're supposed to have it with tea or coffee we actually forgot to get the tea so we were told by the guy at reception in our hotel to have it plain so yeah he said done. plain he said it was the best there was like a bit of a debate going on so sugared oily buttery goodness first thing in the morning Mm. I mean, it would definitely be good dipped into something, definitely with a drink, um, but it's very filling, it's hearty, and it's warm. I'm excited for this. It looks like a breakfast roti that has been covered in like sugar. You can see them cooking it out the back, and it looked like there was a lot of oil going on. It doesn't feel like there's much at all on this. What do I call it again? Mesemen. Mesemen. Close. My pronunciation's better, I think. Mm, it's good. It's not as sweet, is it? Mm. It's plain. You definitely you're right. You want to dip it in something. Walking around Casablanca, you can really see the French influence here. They actually colonised Casablanca in the 1900s. You've got the trams, you've got European architecture, signs are in French, people speak French, there's croissants, um, but where we're heading was left alone by the French, so it feels very different. You definitely cannot miss us with this gorgeous level eight Voyager suitcase. We have been testing it out on our recent travels and have been really surprised at the quality. There's always a fear when you get a new suitcase that it will end up damaged when you pick it up at the airport, but not this one. It has a durable scratch resistant hard shell made with special light weight material so you can make the most of your luggage allowance. We also love the fact that it's seamless in its looks and practicality. We can basically wheel this on all different types of flooring with absolutely minimal effort. There are four 360 spinner wheels as you can see taking no effort at all. And the super wide handle means that even I can wheel it around. The lock is super easy to use. It has a three digit combination. And I don't know if you can see, but there are plenty of handles on the suitcase, which means it is super easy for Matt to put on the airport belts, to lift in and out of buses and in and out of taxis. Inside the suitcase, there are two compartments. We actually managed to fit all of our clothes, shoes and toiletries into these two 
compartments. There are zip pockets and there's a waterproof section which is actually super handy for any of like mini toiletries or if you have any damp clothing. It's funny, you know, we'd never have thought that we'd be discussing the technicalities of a suitcase, but after three years of full-time travel, we've definitely become very aware of the problems with suitcases. We've had missing wheels, missing handles, and broken exteriors. We're very pleased to finally found a suitcase that seems to withstand the airport struggles. So yeah, Thanks, Level 8. It is such a contrast walking around this city. We've just walked through the United Nations Square, which is this modern square full of coffee shops where everyone goes to meet up. And then on the other side of the road, you have the old Medina, sort of like the old city beyond them city walls and the old clock tower. I feel like this is where the chaos begins. Let's do this. We found the chaos and we actually have managed to escape it with the most beautiful tiny little alleyways that date back thousands of years. They haven't changed, um, but the chaos is there. You can hear the music, there's shops, there's people, it's bustling. It's crazy. It Th this is. is what I expected yeah. when I was thinking yeah. of Morocco, tiny yeah. little alleyways where you could get, I feel like we could get lost in it. You could hours. definitely get lost. Even the Medina itself is a place of contrast. You've got like the main hustle and bustle of the market with all like your fake t-shirts, your fake trainers, everything you can get at any sort of market in the world. And then you come to these quaint little courtyards that are almost Mediterranean and they've got all the hanging baskets as you walk through. And then even on the walls, you can see all of like the football signs. Football is a real culture here in Morocco, especially in Casablanca. And everyone down these streets, look. Talk to everyone's so friendly. It has to be the most beautiful street ever. Like, I feel like you could be standing here for hours trying to work out what each of the things all are. All these hanging baskets, all the trinkets. There's so many trinkets. There's even like a flipper, one flipper just on the wall. We've made it out of the Medina. If you're not going to directions like me, you're going to struggle. But it's good fun to explore. And we've heard some music. This is what we're looking for. Moroccan music, Moroccan restaurants in a tiny little house. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Thank you. It's brickwork, there's tiles everywhere. We have some olives, obviously. We have bread and we have some traditional Moroccan food on the way. Um, it really is beautiful. We even had the live that Moroccan the music musicians. Um, my head hurts, it's ringing, but it was so much fun. To start with, we do have a Moroccan mint tea. <gasps> That's really, really hot. Let me try it. I love the way they pour it. The way they go higher and higher. I'm I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd spill it everywhere. It's lovely. Very minty. This looks so, so good. So this is the tagine. Well, the tagine is actually the clay pot that the dish is cooked in. And because of the shape of the tagine, it makes whatever is in it very, very soft. Most commonly, you're going to have it with lamb. We've gone for a vegetable one, and I have absolutely no idea what veg we've got in here. We have a little bit of everything, of course, the olives. Wow, that is um, so good, it's so fresh. It's zesty. I feel like on a hot day today, the vegetarian one, definitely the best option. This has to be the most visually colorfully appealing so food colorful. ever. I love it and I also got um, kind of like because it's brunch time I got a couple of Moroccan breakfast options so I got the Moroccan um, pancake or crepe assortment so I actually have um, bagheer. Now bagheer is like a type of pancake it has all of these like fluffy little holes in it and we also have mesamen which we tried this morning. This is the bagheer. Can you see? Do you see what I mean? Um, I love how you can watch the ladies just cooking it yeah, outside Yeah, just well. cooking, flipping it um, and it's covered in honey so this will be very very sweet. Let's try it. Mmm, it's kind of soggy. It's like 
strange. You know what it tastes like? Like an English muffin with like all the little bubbles on the top and covered in honey. Sweet, perfect with a tachine, probably not. That food was amazing and it only came to around 145 Moroccan dirham, which is about 11, 12 English pounds for two mains and one huge jug of Moroccan tea. And the tagine is somewhat the national dish of Morocco and I feel like we're gonna be having it a lot throughout the country. So it was a good way to start trying one that is not so traditional, the vegetarian one, but it was still very, very nice. And we missed this amazing entrance. We came in the back Way. The front is amazing. You can actually see the old fortified walls of the Bastion. Such a cool restaurant. Just a two minute walk and we have made it to the Atlantic Ocean. How cool is that? And possibly the most uniquely placed mosque in the world. This is Hassan the second. As you can see, it literally backs onto the Atlantic Ocean. You've got people swimming. Not sure if I would want to swim. with a sea breeze, which you need right now. As it's a Sunday, it feels like everyone comes down to the seafront, to the Atlantic Ocean, to take a look at the mosque, hello. to hello, to have their ice cream, to go for a swim, to go fishing. Um, but we are gonna try and go into the mosque. We know to actually go inside, you need a special tour that only happen at certain times of the day. And we think, hello, we feel like we might have missed them. I see everyone's just so friendly in Casablanca. Um, but hopefully we can go onto the grounds and just check out the beauty of this mosque. It's actually the tallest minaret in the world. And as you can see, it's so hazy and so high that you can't even see the top. I can't believe this. Look at how hazy it is. We can't even see the fact that this is the tallest minaret in the world. It's 200 meters high. I feel like it adds to the height that you yeah. can't see the top. It makes it seem even taller, the fact that you can literally just see the base of it. Um, but now we're in. We are in two the mosque and it's not what I was expecting. It has the most beautiful courtyard right here and just all of this space. I love this. This is what I think of when I think of Morocco. This is the traditional Moroccan mosaic Zaligi and they've incorporated it so well. I think we're gonna see a lot of these mosaics everywhere but you might be surprised in thinking that this mosque is old. It was actually built or finished in 93, I think it was, um, which is crazy. Like you would really think that this was a lot older. It's basically the same age as us. Yeah, oh my God. I, well, I'm a little bit younger than the mosque actually. <laughs> You can actually only access the grounds like this without an organized tour at certain hours. So check the website, I'm not too sure when you can do it. We got very lucky today, but I think it's around 130 dirhams if you want to do the tour. So around 10 English pounds. And this place is just so magnificent. The size of it, the fact that today is so, so hazy that you can't see the top of the minaret. It costs hundreds of millions to build. And there are sort of conflicting reports about the size of this mosque. Some say it's the third biggest in the world, World. Some say it's the fifth biggest and some say the seventh biggest, but it is definitely, I think, the second biggest in all of continental Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who even knew Casablanca had beach clubs? Basaha. Who would have thought that I would have needed my swimming trunks here in Casablanca? We jumped in a quick taxi, thank you very much, and we have come to La Corniche. This is basically a stretch of beach full of beach clubs, bars, nightclubs, so swim pools, the Atlantic Ocean. It is so unexpected. This is a complete city of contrast, and of course, it's very moderate. You can drink alcohol if you want, like we are here. This is a beer Casablanca, my How first, I don't know, my first taste of Moroccan beer. I, I can't believe we're in a city right now. It does not feel like you're in a city at all. But now you've got to rate it out of 10. Oh, it's very good. It's very good. It's very light, which you need in this heat. And uh, I'm just shocked. I'm blown away. I'm actually really surprised, not only that there is so many beach clubs, but this beer is very, very good. It's made just outside of Casablanca, so I'm glad we got to try it. Um, and it was 50 dirhams. I don't know if that is expensive or not. That is about four pounds something. I would presume so. That, I think if you went to like a local bar in yeah. the inner city, we'll have cheaper. to see, won't we? We'll have to compare them. Does that mean we have to have another one? <laughs> 
time for dinner. Cheers to the first night with the group. Good morning guys. Well, that was our first day here in Morocco and 24 hours in Casablanca. What a contrast that city is from the beach bar fought with five pounds or 50 dirham draft beer to the really famous mosques and it is a little bit rough around the edges, I'm not gonna lie to you. You can really see that it doesn't get that many tourists, but it is up and coming, they're building new things and they are changing it. So it was really nice to go around and explore, but we did go and meet our group that we are gonna be spending our next week with, um, and we met our CEO, our guide, Mohammed. We had dinner at a local restaurant, had some traditional Moroccan food. I'm really excited to be spending the week with our group, to be going on some activities together, for some free time, for our big moments, our nights out, um, and just to explore the rest that Morocco has. So we will see you in the next one from a new city. Let's explore Morocco.